So at this very moment in time, right now, I am prepared to give you $150,000 cash for just one of your seven PSA 10 first edition Charizards. Is that a yes? On October 15, 2020, the Pokemon card community stood still as they watched YouTuber Logan Paul offer Gary Haas $150,000 US dollars to purchase a single Pokemon card, a PSA 10 first edition Charizard holographic. Pokemon cards. Pokemon cards. Pokemon cards. This media event fell smack bang in the middle of the largest boom in Pokemon trading card history, onset by the COVID pandemic, as well as the recent buzz which had begun swelling around the cards a few months earlier as celebrities began to share their passion for the hobby. Now, the Charizard card in question is one of 16 holographics that were shipped as part of the very first run back in 1999 hence the first edition stamp, and the world rejoices whenever one is obtained, especially when its condition is graded as a perfect 10, which indicates full marks in the card grading categories, centering, corners, edges, and surface. According to the Professional Sports Authenticator website, aka PSA, there have only ever been 123 PSA 10 Charizards, and one of them was bought from Gary Haas on October 15 for $150,000. Yes. Oh, go, go, go. But interestingly, this massive price tag wasn't the largest the community had seen for a Charizard at this point, since just a week earlier on October 10, rapper Logic would make history when he bought a PSA 10 from longtime collector Jared Mast at auction for a massive 220,000 US. Do you think it was the card getting sold for such a high number that made people start to pay more attention to what Pokemon cards were doing? Oh, without a doubt. I mean, really, that's where the news comes from. Um, after that card sold to Logic, it was everywhere. I mean, he took a picture of his his baby with it in his mouth and everything. Like, it went viral on the internet. I mean, it was, it was nuts. Inevitably, that gains a couple people into the market. But what about the rest of the cards? Following Charizard in popularity is the first edition Blastoise. And here we begin to see a pattern that involves the original Pokemon games for Game Boy, since both Charizard and Blastoise are the evolved forms of the rare starter Pokemon the player chooses to be their companion at the start of the adventure. These are the big ones that sit above the rest for being the most powerful, but also the most nostalgic. But surprisingly, the next in line in desirability isn't the grass-type Venusaur, but one of the more unsuspecting Pokemon, the gentle Chansey. Let's go, baby! Chansey is our third hit out of the box. Now, first edition Chanseys, while no different in terms of printing quantity compared to Blastoise or Charizard, are notoriously difficult to obtain as a PSA 10. All right, dude, Chansey is crazy tough to get a 10 in. Yeah, I was to get a holo is hard, you know, but then to get a Chansey, Chansey's one of the top holos you can get. Like, outside the, the, the main starters, it's probably the card you want to get. When comparing all 16 holos on the PSA website, Chansey's population sits at the bottom of the pack with only 48 PSA 10s ever recorded across its lifetime, which makes obtaining one that much more valuable. Since the pandemic, only one has hit the coveted 10 mark. First PSA 10 we brokered in quite some time. It's not an easy card to locate. With others coming in just under at nines or 9.5s. A 9.5, I'll take it. I will absolutely take it. So why is this happening? Why are PSA 10 chances so hard to obtain? Well, there are two reasons for this Chansey deficit. And the first one comes down to the design of the card and the designer's choice of holographic color. Out of all the original holos, the Chansey is the brightest, which causes problems when being graded. That silver holo background is always gonna be more sensitive than let's say Mewtwo, the purple background, which is like, you can hide flaws in that when you, you submit it uh, for grading. It's not, anything other than the fact that the human eye just has a harder time picking up flaws on a black or on a dark background better than a light background. But the second reason is slightly more unique. Like myself, a lot of us traded these cards when we were younger. They were kind of like the first form of equity, first form of, of currency that we knew. The more desirable holographic cards were obviously the starters and the Pokemon that were used more in the game. And so you had Pokemon like Chansey, which was more perceived to be 
a female Pokemon and something that was more nurse-like, so more motherly. And typically in the beginning, a lot more boys played the game. And so with that being said, the demographics of that card kind of skewed it to be one of the least desirable holographics in the beginning. And so with that, people didn't take as good care of it uh, by nature because people tend to take better care of things that have more value. But what's curious is that other than its outward appearance of always carrying an egg, there's no allusion to Chansey being a nurse or even a female in the original games. They're positioned as just wild Pokemon like the rest of them that players can catch in caves or in the safari zone. It would actually be the anime that would affect the public's perception when it cast Chansey in a nurse role at the Pokemon Center when it eventually released in English a few months before the cards. And so for the card, what was seen as potentially undesirable during the initial days of the hobby is now one of the most valuable among collectors almost 30 years later. There's a sense of irony, I think, to that a little bit. I think that all kind of works backwards with collectibles, you know? It seems to be the stuff that gets pushed aside. The things that are made to be collectible in the start are almost never collectible, you know? And so um, I think there is a lot of irony to it. And, and obviously you can't have the foresight to to see that, but you know, now looking back, it makes total sense. Chansey! <laughs> yes! So when it comes to chances, the only way to get one might be to buy a first edition pack and try your luck at pulling a 10. But success isn't guaranteed. After all, like it says in the description at the bottom of the card, chances are a rare and elusive Pokemon that is said to bring happiness to those who manage to catch it.